Icons are simple graphics designed to represent an object, concept, or action. CorelDRAW has all the tools you need to create an icon, and it's easier than you think. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to create a watermelon icon from just two simple shapes, a circle and an ellipse. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample design file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along. Let's start with the sample design file, with the two shapes on page 1, along with some color swatches. Page 2 has the completed design. First, let's adjust a couple settings to help streamline the workflow. For easy color access, I'll choose Window, Color Palettes, Add Colors from Document. This adds all colors in the file to the document palette along the bottom, making it easy to use swatch colors for fills and outlines. Now that the colors are added, and with the Pick tool active, I'll select the group of swatches and delete it. Now I'll enable View Alignment Guides so that it will be easy to align and position objects. If this option is grayed out for you, your snaps are likely turned off. Disable Snap Off first, then turn on Alignment Guides. Our first step is to transform the circle into the pie-shaped object that will be the basis for the watermelon slice. I'll do this with the Shape tool, found just below the Pick tool. Clicking on the circle to select it displays its one node at the top, which I'll click and drag to the left. Keeping the cursor inside the circle, and using the blue dashed line as a preview, I'll release the mouse button to trim the circle into a pie. I want the curved part of the pie to appear on the bottom. So I'll switch to the Pick tool and click the Mirror Vertically icon on the property bar. Now I'll build on this pie shape to complete the watermelon slice. With the pie still selected, I'll press Ctrl D or Command D on the Mac to duplicate the slice. I want this new pie shape to be a little bigger. On the property bar, I'll lock the scale ratio to apply to both directions. When I change one scale value to 110% and press Enter, both values are filled in and the slice size increases by 10%. The location of the duplicate doesn't matter since I'll adjust that later. I'll click the light pink swatch to set the fill. With the second pie shape still selected, I'll press Ctrl or Command D to duplicate it again. The Smart Duplicate feature remembers the scale factor increase from before and now applies 120% to this new object, which I'll fill with dark green. The order of these objects should be dark pink first, then light pink, then green at the bottom. To change the layering of these shapes, I'll right-click on the green object and choose Order to Back of Page. I'll change the order of the light pink shape next, sending it back one layer so that it's now in the middle. Note that object order can also be changed by dragging and dropping in the Object Stalker or Objects Inspector on the Mac. Now I'll use the Pick tool to marquee select all three shapes, press R to align right, T to align top, then Ctrl G or Command G to group them together. The Object Stalker now shows all three shapes within the group. What we have so far is only half the watermelon slice. While this group is still selected, I'll press Ctrl or Command C to copy it, then Ctrl or Command V to paste. This places the copy directly on top of the original. To flip the copy to the right, I'll hold the Ctrl key or Command on the Mac, drag the center left handle to the right, then release. For some added depth, I'll keep Ctrl or Command pressed and select just the red shape within the group, then fill this shape with the slightly darker red. I'll now zoom in on the little dark green ellipse at the bottom, which will be used to create our watermelon seeds. It's not quite the right shape yet. I'll activate the Shape tool, select the ellipse, and click the Convert to Curves icon on the property bar. For a sharp point at the top, I'll click the node to display its left and right arrows. Dragging either arrow toward the node itself sharpens the point. I'll do the same at the bottom node, 
and now this looks more like a seed. Switching back to the pick tool, I'll move the seed to the front of the layer order. Because alignment guides are enabled, I can easily move this shape to the center of the watermelon slice. I'll make one duplicate of the seed to go over to the right and up. A second duplicate can be easily placed symmetrically. Now let's see how to produce a simplified single color version of the icon with a transparent background. To preserve the colored icon I just completed, I'll switch to page 2 that has a copy of the completed design. I'll first select all objects with the pick tool. To change all outlines to black, I'll right-click the black swatch. On the Mac, I would right-click on a swatch and choose Set Outline Color. For wider outlines, I'll set the width to 4 points. To remove all fills, I'll left-click the No Color swatch. To remove the extra line segments in the middle, I'll open the Crop Tool Group and activate the Virtual Segment Delete tool. This tool snaps upright when it finds a segment to delete, and I'll delete each segment one by one. Zooming in closely, we can see a small gap at the top. To close it, I'll select the left group with the pick tool and tap the right arrow a couple of times to nudge the group toward the center. Last step, I'll shift select all three seeds and fill them with black. To fill the rind, I'll open the Fill Tool group and activate the Smart Fill tool. The fill needs to be black, and I can click anywhere inside the outer shape to fill it. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating an icon in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along.